All right, so now that you have learned every single quadrilateral, um, we're going to now prove them on the coordinate plane. So we're going to be graphing them. We're going to be looking at some slopes, distance, midpoint, um, and things like that to prove that they are actually the shape that they say they are. Okay, so let's look at how to prove them. So when you prove things, we're going to be looking at several things. Um, one of them is going to be parallel lines. So you know parallel means the same slope. Okay, so we're going to be looking for like 3 over 4 and making sure the opposite side also has a 3 over 4. We want them to have the exact same slope. Okay, again you can do rise over run or you can use the slope formula. Um, for congruent sides, we're going to be looking at the distance. Okay, we're going to be looking to see if one distance equals the other distance, okay? You can use the distance formula, or remember the easier shortcut is a squared plus b squared equals c squared, and using that c squared um, to find the distance of a diagonal side. Um, with bisectors, we know bisect means cut in half, and it actually goes through the midpoint. So if you're looking about a bisector, you're actually going to be looking to find the midpoint, okay? Um, lastly, for 90 degree angles, um, we know that means that the slopes are perpendicular. And we remember that perpendicular slopes would be 3 over 4, and it's the opposite reciprocal. So opposite meaning negative 4 over 3. Okay, So if you have two slopes like this, that means there is a right angle at that shape, so you know you have a 90 degree angle. Okay, So let's look at some examples of proving these shapes. Now, again, here's all the formulas that you will ever need. Again, if you like the distance formula, use it. If you like the Pythagorean theorem, use it, okay? If you like using rise over run and counting, use it that way, or you can use two points and use the slope formula. Now, not going to lie, this is a lot of work. Um, what I did was I highlighted the blue, um, and that is the easiest way to prove it, okay? So if you want to prove a shape's a parallelogram, you could check the slopes of every single side and make sure that they're the same, okay? You could do the slope formula four times. If you love slope, do it. Also, you could check to make sure that the distance of the opposite sides are the same. So if you want to do the distance four times and prove that they're congruent, do it. But the quickest way is to prove that the diagonals bisect each other. So if you find the midpoint of each of the diagonals and they're the same, that means that the diagonals bisect each other. Again, quickest way, because you're only doing the midpoint formula twice. But again, you can pick any of the three options to pick from. If you want to prove a shape's a rectangle, you need to prove that the diagonals are congruent, so distance two times, but you need to make sure that they're not perpendicular. So you're going to have to find the slopes and make sure that they are the same, or not the same, but they're not perpendicular. They could be anything. Okay. Again, that's the quickest way. You can prove it the other way. For a rhombus, you want to make sure that the diagonals are perpendicular, um, so the slopes of the two lines have an opposite reciprocal, and then you also want to make sure that they're not congruent, okay, because the diagonals are perpendicular but not congruent, okay. So notice we're going diagonals on a lot of these because that's the quickest way. But if you wanted to prove that the rhombus has four equal sides and no 90 degree angles, do it that way, okay. So a lot of options for proving. To prove a square, quickest way is to prove that the diagonals are congruent and perpendicular. Okay, um, So those are how you prove parallelograms. Again, pick any way you want to do it. If you want to show a lot of math um, and feel really knowledgeable, go for it. If you want a really quick way, do the way in blue. Um, proving a trapezoid. You need to make sure that there's only one pair of parallel sides. So you need to do the slope formula four times and make sure that two uh, or one a pair of the sides are parallel. Okay. Um, to prove an isosceles trapezoid, you need to make sure you have one pair of parallel sides, so do what you did before, and then prove that the legs are congruent by doing the distance formula. Okay. To prove a kite, you need to make sure that there are no sides parallel, and then you need to make sure that the um, consecutive sides are congruent. So you're going to do the distance formula um, or the Pythagorean theorem four times and make sure that the consecutive sides are congruent. Okay. So again, lots and lots of math involved in this, okay? Um, so, and it's time consuming, so I'm not going to go through every single example for you in this notes. I'm going to kind of give you a couple examples of the distance, the midpoint, and the slope formula, 
and you guys get to kind of pick where you want to go from there. If you need more help on each way of proving it, there are going to be YouTube videos below this video. Okay? Woo! A lot of talking. So, let's look at some examples. So, you have a quadrilateral with those coordinate points. What's the most specific name for the quadrilateral, and how do you know? So, first off, you need to graph it. So, we've got 1, 5. Here is W. Um, and then X is at 5, 0. Uh, y is at 0, negative 4. And then Z is at negative 4, 1. Okay? So when you connect those lines, you can kind of take a guess based off of what it looks like. It looks like a square. Okay? But again, it could be a rhombus. It could be a rectangle. And it could be a parallelogram and be neither of those. We have to prove it, okay? So I'm going to prove it the fastest way and prove that the diagonals are congruent and um, perpendicular. So my diagonals um, are going to be W, Y, okay? Um, so first off, to find the distance from this, I'm going to have a little tiny right triangle right there. So I know that side was a 1. And then this side was 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay? So to find the diagonal, I would do 1 squared plus 9 squared equals c squared. Um, 1 plus 9 squared is 81. So I would have 82 and square root it. And the square root of 82 is 9.06. Okay? So that is the distance of wy. So now I'm going to find the distance of x z. Okay, so this distance, again I'm going to have a right triangle that's really skinny with this side of a 1 and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So notice you've kind of got opposite reciprocal slopes. So if you did 1 squared plus 9 squared equals c squared, notice it's the exact same numbers. So I would get 9.06. So what I proved that the diagonals are congruent. Okay? But the diagonals are also congruent in a rectangle. So basically I have to do one more thing to prove it's a um, square. So I need to make sure that the diagonals are perpendicular. So I need the slopes of WY and the slope of ZX. So W, Y, for the slope, I'm going to count rise over run, and I'm going to start down here and go up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 over 1, which is just a 9. And then I'm going to find the slope of Z, Y, is the X, and do rise over run. And I'm going to start at Z, and I went down 1, so negative 1, and I'm going to go over... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So I went 1 over 9. So I noticed that 9 and 1 over 9 are perpendicular. Okay? So I have a 90 degree angle right here. So I proved that the diagonals were congruent, and I proved that the diagonals were perpendicular. Therefore, it is a square. So if we wanted to write out a nice justification in words, I would say... Because the diagonals are congruent and the slopes are perpendicular for the diagonals, therefore it is a square. Okay? So again, a lot of work to prove a shape on a coordinate plane. If you have any questions, um, please let me know. All right. We are going to move on to our next shape. So again, um, what kind of a shape is this and how do you know? So we need to graph it first off. So um, I'm going to pause this and graph it really quick. So pause it as well. Um, and then we'll get back to getting started. Graph it. Um, notice it kind of looks like a trapezoid turned on its side. Um, so let me actually start about that route. So to prove it's a trapezoid, I need to find um, the slopes of all the sides and make sure I have two parallel sides. So notice that xy looks parallel to yz. So let's do that math. Let's check it. Okay. So to find the slope, I'm going to go down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 
over one, two, three. So I went down six and over three. Okay, so that actually simplifies to a slope of a negative two. So let me find the slope of WZ and go down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight over one, two, three, four. So I went down eight and over four. And if I reduce that, I am going to get negative two. Okay, so what I proved is that WZ is going to be parallel to XY. Okay, so now I need to find the slopes of the other sides just to make sure it's not a parallelogram. Okay, which I can see that it is not because definitely these are not parallel. Um, so it is a trapezoid. But now the other thing it could be is an isosceles trapezoid. So I need to make sure it's isosceles and not just normal trapezoid. So I need to make sure that the legs are congruent if it's an isosceles trapezoid. So I need to find the distance of WX and see if it is equal to YZ. I don't know. Okay. So again, that distance is a 2, 1, 2, 3, 4. That distance is a 4. So I'd have 4 squared plus 2 squared equals C squared, um, 16 plus 4, so square root of 20, okay? And then over here, um, let me make my little right triangle. Again, it can be inside or outside of the shape. Um, so 1, 2, 3, 4 was that distance. 1, 2, 3 was this distance. So I can already tell by the triangle that they're not going to be the same size. Because um, if I do 4 squared plus 3 squared, I'm obviously not going to get what I got over here, okay? Um, but if we did um, 16 plus 9 and we square rooted those, you would see that these are not um, the same. So it's not an isosceles trapezoid because the legs aren't the same, so it's just a trapezoid. So if the legs were the same, that would be an isosceles trapezoid. All right. Okay. Time for one more on the graph. So again, let's press pause to save some time. Um, why don't you go ahead and graph that quadrilateral and kind of see if you can get a feel for what shape it is. After graphing, that looks like a kite turned on its side. So to prove it is a kite, I need to make sure that WX and XY are the same, and then I need to make sure that these bottom two um, sides are the same. So I'm going to start off with WX finding the length and XY finding the length. So I'm going to draw my right triangle to connect them. That length was a 2 and this length was a 3. So I'd say 2 squared plus 3 squared equals C squared. Um, 4 plus 9, square root them. and we should get 3.6, okay? So that's the distance of the first one. Um, let's find the distance of xy. And again, that side was a 2, and that side was a 3. So once you notice, um, you've got the same numbers that you're squaring. So of course, when you square root that, you are going to get 3.6, okay? So I know that this side is the same as that side, okay? So let's move down to doing... WZ and find that length and then YZ. So again, I've got a right triangle with a side of 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So I'm going to have 3 squared plus 7 squared equals 3 or C squared. So 3 squared is 9 plus 49 is going to be 58. So when you square root 58, you should get um, 7.6. Okay. So again, let's try that in a different color over here. Um, notice that side is 3. And then guess what? Hey, that side is 7 as well. So again, 3 squared plus 7 squared does equal um, C squared. And when you square root, you will get 7.6. Okay. So the slope triangle is really nice because um, one, it tells you the slope. So the slope of this um, yz would be 3 over 7, and the distance is the square root of that, okay? So we have proved it's a kite, because consecutive sides are the same, okay? So again, that is how you prove um, quadrilaterals 
on a coordinate plane. If you need any more help on another shape, please let me know. Otherwise, um, watch part two for the video. All right, mathematicians, um, time for part two. Good news is it's not on the coordinate plane, um, and it's a little easier, and it's going to be a really quick video. Okay, I have two problems for you. Um, so given ABC is a parallelogram, um, find the missing vertex point D. Okay, so again, if you wanted to get a sheet of graph paper out, you could find it, um, but we necessarily don't have to have a coordinate plane. Um, I am going to draw a little XY coordinate graph because I noticed that all of my numbers are positive. So 2, 3 would be somewhere about here. And that would be point A. Um, 8, 1, maybe somewhere right here. I'm going to go ahead and write 2, 3. 8, 1. Um, 11, 5, maybe somewhere here. And then I don't know where point D is at. Um, I'm assuming it's probably somewhere over here, right? I just don't know where. So I could kind of draw a little parallelogram, okay? Um, and I'm trying to look for point D. So a way to think about this is using slope um, to, use, to find some distance. So how did they go from an 8 to an 11, okay? Because we don't know anything about this left side over here. Well, to go from an 8 to an 11, I have to add 3, okay, from going from the bottom to the top. So that's going to happen, same thing over here. I'm going to have to add 3 to my x value with the 2. So 2 plus 3 is a 5, okay? So I know that point D is somewhere at a 5, okay? And then you can look at your y values and say, well, how did they go from a 1 to a 5? Okay, well, they added 4. So that has to be true for my left side of my shape as well. So I do have to add 4 from my 3 to get a 7, okay? So D is going to be at 5, 7. Now if we had a coordinate plane and I could graph it and prove it, even more awesome. But again, you don't have to have a coordinate plane to do problems like these, all right? So again, why don't you try this one on the bottom? Um, press pause, and then again, draw a little graph to help you out. Um, otherwise, press pause. Problem, I had P, R, and F, or P, R, and Q, and then S had to be somewhere over here that I didn't know, okay? So I couldn't go from the bottom to the top anymore because I didn't know anything about this point down here. So what I had to do is I started at the top and see how far you had to go down. So I started, I went from a 3 to a 1, so they subtracted 2. So what I did was over here, they went from a negative 2, subtract 2 is negative 4. Again, over here they went from a 3 to a negative 2, so that distance was subtracting 5. So I made sure 4 minus 5 was a negative 1. So point S is at negative 4, negative 1. Now there's also another way of looking at it going from left to right, so I'm going to show you guys that way. So again, um, we would have to go from right to left to see what they did up here and then make that same thing happen down here. So how did you go from a 3 to a negative 2? Okay, you're going to subtract 5. So you had to make sure that that happened right here to subtract 5. And 1 minus 5 is negative 4. Again, how do you go from a 3 to a 4? Well, you add 1. So make sure you add 1 there in negative 2 plus 1 is a negative 1. So you can look at it left to right using slope, or you could look at it up to down using slope. Okay? So if you have any questions on that, let me know. Um, otherwise, that is how you um, prove or find the missing coordinate of a point on a coordinate plane. Okay? Thanks for watching.